so today we are going to be looking at the digestive system now i'm going to post up a number of different um i'm going to post up a number of different uh resources that will be useful for this okay so we're doing the digestive system we're going to start off looking at food okay now this usually is a first year topic so if you're second year or third year, it'll be a while since you've done this but it's no home harm going back over and practicing some exam questions on it okay because it comes up a lot all right and it's kind of woven into two different topics the path of food through, through the digestive system um, and also um, into your uh, human health topic as well okay Okay, so starting off, so girls, you, you should know first of all what a balanced diet is and how to achieve it, and you should know and understand the parts and functions of the digestive system, which is a little bit harder. So first of all, let's look at food groups. So um, if you have older brothers and sisters that are big into their fitness, you may have heard them talk about macros or macronutrients. Now there are three main macronutrients in your diet. You've got carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Now you need to know the jobs and the functions and the whole point of taking in those three different food groups or those three different macronutrients. Now, so carbohydrates girls are for energy and fiber. Okay, without those you will be able to function. Okay, so that includes sugars like simple sugars such as pastries and breads and pastas and sweets um, and also um, things like potatoes um, and things like your shredded wheat and things like that, okay? So carbohydrates are really, really important for energy, girls. You can't function really without them, okay? So you can often hear about low carbohydrate diets. They're not very good for you because your brain can only exist on sugar. Um, fats then, girls, they are very important for energy and insulation. You get them from red meats. You get them from dairy products. Um, you get them from um, vegetable oils and butter and things like that, okay? Uh, also, some vitamins you can only get through fat sources, and they include A, a, D, E, and K. Okay, really important fats. Uh, vitamin D is really important for your bone formation. It's something that we can also make um, from our skin from the sun. Proteins then, girls, are for um, muscle and tissue growth and repair. Really, really important you get enough protein. If you if you have any older brothers and sisters that are into their weights, they probably have uh, taken a large amount of protein to ensure that they have adequate muscle growth. Okay, and also water hydrate is really important for hydration too. And it is, and um, we're you know we're mostly made of water, and our whole transport system is based on it. So we have to make sure we get enough water into our diet too. And then vitamins and minerals, girls. We get our vitamins and minerals mostly from colored vegetables and fruits and um, also from other sources such as, such as dairy products and fat sources too um, and they're really really important for our general health and um, and you know just staying healthy and overall okay and an example of a mineral will be iron you may have, you may take tablets for that so iron is really important to prevent anemia it's really important for your energy levels um, and if your red blood cells whereas vitamins an example of a water soluble vitamin because you've done fat soluble already would be vitamin c which you get from um your uh your fruits such as uh, citrus fruits and oranges and lemons and things like that okay now a balanced diet too so to ensure that you get all of your macronutrients or all of your food groups in the correct proportions we look at what's called the food pyramid and the food pyramid gives us an indication of how many servings of each type of food group we should get a day now this has recently changed so that the bottom um, base of the pyramid girls used to be carbohydrates now they're saying it's fruit and vegetables so your if you look at your plate at every meal the the greatest proportion of it should be fruit and vegetables and um, so they're saying you should get five to seven portions of fruit and vegetables a day you should be getting three to five portions of of whole wheat cereals and carbohydrates uh, three portions of milk and cheese that's for your calcium for your bones particularly important for girls to prevent osteoporosis and um, which is like a, a bone weakening as you get older and um, then we should you should be getting meat poultry eggs beans or nuts if you're vegetarian as well so you should get two portions of that every day and um, fats and spreads and oils um because you, you do need a certain amount of those in your diet to ensure that you're getting your fat soluble vitamins your a d e and k and then finally um girls you know your um your treats and your sweets you should really only be getting that um once or twice a week they shouldn't be really daily okay which i know is easier said than done now digestion girls okay so there's two types of digestion so the whole point of digestion girls is that you are able to break down foods small enough to be able to get into your bloodstream so they can travel around the body and be used by your cells so physical digestion is the tearing and breaking of food into smaller pieces it usually occurs in the mouth but also can occur a little bit in the stomach through muscle movement and churning of your stomach your stomach you can sometimes feel that if you're not very well where your stomach is churning and it's 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 contracting it's a big muscular organ so you do get some small amount 
amount of physical breakdown of food in the stomach too. Chemical digestion is the breakdown of food by chemical means. So that means either by acid or, a or special chemicals called enzymes, which we'll talk about at the end of this. Now, this is your digestive system here. It looks really scary, but essentially what it is, girls, is a big, long pipe that goes from your mouth to your anus, okay? And it's kind of all coiled up together so it fits in our body, all right? Starts off with your esophagus, which is your food pipe. That's connected to your stomach, okay? And um, Your stomach then is connected to your small intestines, which are the thin ones here, which is then connected to your large intestines, which is then connected to your anus and your... um your rectum here, okay, which is where you store your poo. All right, so a huge amount has to happen from the mouth all the way to the anus to ensure that we absorb as much of our nutrients as possible. Then we also have two external organs that are really, really important for our digestive system too, the liver and the pancreas. Now, what they do here, girls, so if I were you, I'd pause the video here and write down the job of each of the main parts. So your mouth is physical and chemical digestion. Esophagus is just really a transport, um, pipe that takes food from the um to the stomach from the mouth uh, your stomach does chemical digestion by acid and enzymes small intestines absorption of nutrients your vitamins your minerals your fats your carbohydrates large intestinal absorption of water your liver breaks down any chemicals that you take in in your food such as um, paracetamol neurofen perhaps alcohol um, and other other drugs that you might take and uh, your liver is responsible for breaking that down to make sure that it's that you're um that it's safe for your blood and safe for your cells also produces bile which is a brown sticky substance that helps to break down fats in your digestive system and then your pancreas sorry i've spelled that wrong so then your pancreas girls um, makes insulin, which is really important if you're a diabetic, you know all about insulin, really important for the absorption of sugar in your body um, and also makes digestive enzymes too. OK, now the way in which your food moves from their mouth to your anus girls, it's what's called. Um, um, oh, it's just left my head now for a second. Sorry, girls. Um, it's a muscular contraction called peristalsis. It's a big word, but essentially what it is is your it's just a squeezing action that passes food from one part of the digestive system to the other. Now, moving on. So enzymes, girls, now. OK, so you should know what an enzyme is and how it works and know some examples of enzymes. So your stomach, girls, the main role of your stomach is to chemically and physically digest food. The way it does that, girls, is it produces acid and it also produces the enzyme protease. Protease, girls, breaks down proteins. So if you have a big lump of steak for dinner, it's your stomach that mostly breaks that down by producing that enzyme protease. Now, girls, this is your definition for an enzyme that you have to know. An enzyme is a biological catalyst. It speeds up a chemical reaction without getting used up, okay? The materials an enzyme binds to are called its substrate. So if we've got the enzyme protease in the stomach, the thing that it, it, it attacks or the thing that it breaks down grows is called its substrate, that's protein, okay? So every enzyme has a specific substrate. Think of it like in soulmates terms, okay? So every enzyme has its specific soulmate. It has one thing that it binds to. Um, and they, the reason it has one thing that it binds to is that they fit perfectly together like jigsaw pieces just like this, okay? So protease won't work on carbohydrate, it won't work on fats, it will only work for proteins, okay? Now the two examples I would learn off girls are amylase in the mouth, that's, um, its substrate is starch, that's, you know, the stuff that, that's in your bread that gives you energy, okay? And protease in the stomach, which breaks down protein. Now the way amylase works, girls, it comes along in your mouth, it's produced by your glands with your saliva, and it breaks down the starch into what's called maltose molecules. OK, so starch, uh, amylase is, uh, breaks down starch into maltose. Then protease, girls, breaks down protein into the amino acids that make it up. So the whole point of enzymes, girls, is that they're breaking your food into smaller parts that can then be absorbed. Um, how can we prove that amylase is working in your mouth? Now, this is a bit of a gross experiment you like to do in school. So what I do is I take a sample of starch. So it's just a, a, a solution of starch, okay? Stuff that's in your pasta, stuff that's in your bread. And I get the whole class to spit in the cup, which is kind of disgusting. Then we leave it half an hour. And what we do then, we test to see if there's any starch left at the end of the, at the, end of the lesson. There is no starch left at the end of the lesson, girls. We test it with iodine. And what happens is, it shows that all of the starch has been broken down by everybody's enzymes in the class. And the special thing about enzymes is they don't get used up. They break down their substrate and then they um and then and then they can break more to break down more substrate again and again and again. They never get used up, which is amazing. 
Um, so girls, that is your food, your digestive system and your enzymes. Now I know that's a lot in a short space of time. So I will post up some supporting uh, videos and some supporting websites for um, that you can uh, use to, uh, to go through this again. Okay, and I'm gonna put up a little worksheet that you can try. Thanks ladies.